Hi, everyone who's joining us. We're just going to give it a minute for everybody to filter in. And please note that this session is being recorded. going to give it another minute to make sure that we have everybody and then I will get started. Okay, it looks like we've tapered off with people joining the webinar. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, my name is Kristen Ball. I'm the University Registrar. And on the webinar with us tonight, I have two other people from my office, Erica Jackson and Brian Moyer, who will be helping with the Q&A function. And Andrea Vest from the Academic Advising Resource Center is also with us um, and will be doing the seven o'clock webinar on um, advising tips if you're staying around for that. Um, so just as a reminder, if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A. Um, if we don't get to them as I go along, we'll get to them at the end. There should be time for questions at the end. Um, and, and again, just use that function. Okay, um, so tonight we are going to be reviewing uh, Banner Web Basics. Banner Web is our student facing information system where students can find, do registration, see their student information, look at grades, uh, schedules, and all that sort of thing, and also look at their degree audit. Our degree audit system is called, called Grad Tracker, and that is accessible through um, the Banner Web. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen. see. And is everybody seeing my, um, no, not yet. okay, you should be seeing my banner web login screen now. Um, so to get to banner web, I'm in our test system, but you can get to banner web by just doing bannerweb.richmond.edu. There's also a link, I'm sure, from New Spiders and from the registrar's office website. Our website is just registrar at richmond.edu. So to log into BannerWeb, which is where you've done some of your admission activities, you just need your net ID, which is your um, combination alpha and numeric um, login, and then the password that you've created previously in uh, BannerWeb. Okay, so when you log in, this is the basic menu that you will see. Um, and we're gonna be focusing on the student services menu tonight. So under student services, that is where you will do all the functions related to my office, which include registration um, and viewing your transcript or viewing your grades. Um, one quick thing, um, I mentioned Grad Tracker, which is the degree audit system. I wanna show you there is a link from the student services page. There's also a link in the student profile, but just so that you can get a sense of what Grad Tracker looks like. When you click on the link, you have to click on another link and then it takes you to your degree audit. There's a header with um, information, general information about you. Um, here's where you'll see when your registration class is. So as you go through your four years here, you can double check here to see when your registration time is because we do register by class. When you have earned credits and a GPA, they will show up on the side. And if you have any holds on your account, they will also show up in Grad Tracker here. There's a few different parts to Grad Tracker. There is the there are the degree requirements, which are in the first block that you see. You will also see your um, general education requirements spelled out here. And as you register for classes, you will see them in a light gray with the letter R next to them, showing that you're registered, you have not earned credit. Once you get a grade, the grade will show up and the box will be checked off that you have completed that requirement. You can also see your classes that are in progress. Um, and any electives that aren't being used elsewhere to meet requirements show up here. One thing you might be interested in is the what if feature we have where you can take a look and see if I wanted to major in chemistry or environmental studies, where would my classes fit right now? How much further would I have to go? So you can use the what if function to do that and select a major and you can select as many majors um, or minors as you want to run the what if function. And you just pick your um, 
the major you wanna run it against. And you can also change the degree if you wanted to say pursue a BS in environmental studies rather than a BA, you can change that here. Do not change your catalog year though, because that you um, are held to the requirements in the catalog you came in under. So you wanna keep that the same. And then you just click the process what if button. And below your gen ed requirements, you will then see the major requirements for the major or majors that you have chosen and where the classes that you might be registered for fit in. So just wanted to make you aware of that functionality. Um, if you wanted to take a look as you go through right now with no registration and no transfer work on, it will be a blank slate. But once AP credit starts coming in, you will see it here. And then once you register for classes, you will also see it in Grab Tracker. What I'm gonna focus mainly on tonight is the registration functionality in BannerWeb because at this point you should be working on making plans um, to, um, from which we will register you beginning in July. So to make your plan and to see what classes are being offered, you can go to um, the registration menu and you're gonna to wanna to choose the top option, student registration menu. And again, registration menu. And then you'll notice that a new tab is open and you will be in an updated version of registration. There's a few things you can do from this point. Um, for this time, it's not as important, but going forward, you'll always want to check your prepare for registration tab. Um, you pick the term for which you're trying to register. And this will let you know if you've been marked as advised, if you have any holds, um, if your status permits registration. And right now as incoming first years, you will, everything will be green and you will be good to go with registration. But um, in the future, you might have a hold or you might need to be advised and that will show up here so that you know that. You can always navigate back with the breadcrumbs across the top. So, um, to browse for classes, to see what's being offered in the fall and make your choices. You can do this in the plan ahead feature, but I'm going to show the browse classes feature first so that you can get a sense of how to do searches and see sections. So I just click on browse classes. I pick my term, it's already defaulted in since I'd chosen that previously for my prepare to register. There's a basic search feature in the, um, browse classes where you can just enter a subject. There's a drop down, or say I wanted to look for chemistry. I type chem and it pulls up anything with chemistry in the subject code. Now you can look for as many um, subject codes here as you would like. You, so you could enter four things here. The more you choose, the longer the list is gonna be. So the harder it's going to be to filter through, but um, you, can, you can choose as many as you'd like here. In this search, I recommend just doing a subject code and not worrying about a course number or a keyword because that will bring you back as much as um, you know, more, more results and you can filter from there. So once you have your subject code or subject codes that you wanna look for, um, click the search and that will bring you back a list of all the classes with that subject code that are being offered in this term when you're using the browse classes function. Now this is our test environment, so not everything is built out, but notice that the classes are in numeric order. Um, you will see section numbers. If the section has an L in front of it, it's the lab that's associated with the lecture, which does not have the L in front of it. You can also see the CRN for the course. So if you choose to register by just typing in CRNs, you can get those here. That's the course reference number. You can see what days and times the class is being offered, and you can see what attributes the class has. So this class meets the natural science requirement and is an environmental studies elective. Um, not all classes within majors have attributes on them, but all gen eds are going to have an attribute on them. You can see that this class has a linked section, which means that you need to take a lab along with the lecture and would need to register for both of them at the same time to register. Um, not all classes and not even all lab sciences have a link, but if it has a link, just be aware that you must register for the two pieces at once in order to get registered for the class. You can view the link section here to show you what your options are. Under status, you can also see how many seats are available. So in this example, there's 22 seats total and 22 of them are available because this is our test system and registration hasn't taken place. 
please keep in mind that when you're looking at this in our live schedule, that there will be seats for first years added um, after our transfer registration ends at the end of this month. So if you're seeing um, classes and everything looks full, there will be some seats added to specific sections um, towards the end of June before the first year registration takes place. Um, and that um, your first year seminars are going to look short at this point. They will end up being at 16 seats apiece in other classes as well. We've saved back some first year seats for. So just be aware of that when you're looking at the seats remaining. You can always put a class on your plan that doesn't have seats remaining. And if it doesn't get seats added, it just won't register you for that class. Um, the other things you can do in the um, browse classes, if you click on a course's title, you can get some more information about it, including a course description. Um, this information is also available in our catalog that you get through get to through the registrar's site. But if you just want to see it all in one place, you can find it here. You can also find prerequisites. Now, this 100 level chemistry does not have a prerequisite, so you won't see that here. But if I chose um, a 300 level chemistry, you would see prerequisites here. A prerequisite is a class that you must have on your record before you can register for um, the class that has the prerequisite. So keep that in mind as you're going through. If um, say you're trying to take an upper level math class but haven't taken Calc 1 yet, Calc 1 will be the requirement and you can't register for the upper level class. For that. Okay, so um, that is the basic search feature for Browse. There is an advanced search feature, feature, sorry. So when I go back to search again, I'm gonna get rid of my subject and I can do the advanced search. And here you can still search by subject, um, but you can also search by, most importantly, by attributes. So say I wanted to find a class that meets my science requirement. I can just, I started typing science and for us, you just have to take one science in either biology, chemistry, or physics. So I could choose all of those attributes to pull back if I wanted to find in any of the sciences, or if I just wanted a biology class, I could have just chosen biology. Um, and this way, you know, it doesn't matter what the subject code is. For example, our symbolic reasoning requirement, there are classics classes that fit that requirement that you might not have thought of. So if you just put in symbolic reasoning without a subject, it would bring that back. Again, here, I recommend just um, leaving it as wide open as possible. So not limiting yourself by keyword or instructor or subject. So I'm just interested in my natural science requirement. I can leave everything else blank click on search and it brings me back everything that's being offered that meets biology, chemistry, or physics. So you can see those all together. Um, you'll see that there's five pages. I can adjust the number of results that show on um, a given page and show them all here. Um, and you'll notice that the biologies do not have a linked section. So the lab is incorporated within the lecture section, whereas the chemistries do have link sections where you need a lab and the lecture section of that when you are looking to fill out your schedule. Okay, so that is how you use the advanced search feature um, if you wanna do specific requirements. Now, I'm, I know that Ms. Vest will go into this in her next session, but you do not have to fill all your requirements in the first semester or even the first year or even the first two years. So you don't need to limit yourself to just searching for the fields of study, but you might wanna get one or two out of the way. And this is a way to determine what classes are available that meet those requirements. And again, if I just wanna go back to my um, search, I can get back here. Um, I can clear my results and I can search by subject again. And I can do as many subjects as I want. But again, some subjects are going to have several, you know, up to 50 sections. So you might not want to leave it wide open or, or might not want to do a bunch of subjects all at once. Okay, so you can browse classes to get an idea of our offerings. And then when you're ready to make a plan, go back to the main landing page that we got to um, through the student menu and go to the plan ahead menu. Again, it's gonna ask you for your term that will default in if you've previously chosen a term, um, but if not, just choose fall of 20. And we do only allow planning for the one term ahead. So fall 22 is the only term that you could plan for right now. Now, as this student, I have not yet made a plan, so I'm gonna create a new plan. 
Um, we are asking you for the pre-registration time to make two plans. One will be your FYS plan where you give us as many FYS options as possible um, and have only FYSs in that plan. The second plan you need to make is um, a plan that includes um, any other courses you would be interested in. And please give us as many options as possible in um, that plan, but um, any classes in any other subjects you might wanna take. So I'm going to make my FYS plan first. And so I just wanna search by, um, subject code FYS, and I go in to search. Now you'll notice here is a little bit different than the browse sections because in the plan ahead, it will bring back any classes that are in the catalog and on the books. They might not necessarily be being offered in a given semester. So what you're gonna wanna do is check view sections to see what sections are actually being offered in the fall. Um, and so you'll see all of the, the fall 22 FYS sections. Um, and you can see, I only built uh, days and times for two of them, but you, there will be days and times on all of them that you can look at. And if you find one that you're interested in and you wanna add it to your plan, you just click the add button on the far right. And then you'll see um, a couple of new windows pop open. You can also, toggle them with the navigation in the middle. Um, and so you can add as many of these as you want to your plan. You'll see them in the calendar view where they show up um, and also in this view. Um, so like I say, for our FYSs, we recommend that you give us as many as possible, preferably about 20 of those. And um, you can just keep adding them to the plan. Once you've added as many as you want to the plan, you wanna save your plan by clicking save plan in the lower right-hand corner. Now you're gonna to wanna to name your plan for the FYS plan, please name it FYS. That way the algorithm will be able to pick out the FYS um, plan and register you for one of the FYSs on your plan. And once you've named it, you just click save. Notice that now the status of these classes is planned as opposed to um, pending. So you can see them here. Um, if you decide sometime between now and July 1st that you no longer want that class on your plan, you can go in and delete a class and then save the plan again. And it will get rid of that one that you don't want anymore. Same with adding, you can just add as many as you want here as well. If you have um, a preference order of your FYSs, you can use the note feature, which looks like a little sticky note with a plus sign and note which one is number one, and please just use the number one, two, three, et cetera, and only use each number once, but you can put in order the FYSs that you have. And if you don't care, you can leave the notes blank, or if you just have a top five and then the rest, it doesn't matter, you can just number the top five, that's fine too. But if you do want to um, preference some things, use the note feature there. And once you do that, they save automatically um, and are part of your plan. So when I go back to the plan ahead feature now, once I've made my FYS plan, when I go in, I can see that I have an FYS plan. But now I wanna make my plan for other classes, the non-FYS classes. So I'm going to create a new plan again and I will search for um, other classes I wanna take. And again, I'm not adding too many subject codes um, just to make it my results section be smaller. But say I wanna take an art history class, so I'm gonna add both of these. You can add um, as many sections of the same class as you want, but you do need multiple classes and not just all sections of the same class. So I can keep going back and adding classes to the plan. We recommend that you add 20 classes, but you're certainly welcome to add more classes than that if you would like. Um, and you can just click the add button and keep on going with the plan. And you'll see they're all in pending status until I save my plan. Um, it's gonna ask you the first time you make a plan to name your plan again. So like we named the first one FYS, I'm just gonna name this one primary. 
um, and save it. And again, you can keep coming in between now and um, July 1st to subtract classes, add classes, whatever you wanna do um, to update the plan. It will not be locked until after the first. So then when I go back to my plan ahead feature, I can see that I now have two plans. Now my FYS plan, since I did that first, is marked as my preferred plan. But I need for my plan of non-FYS classes to be preferred. So I'm going to click the make preferred on that. And now it becomes my preferred plan. So um, you can make whichever plan you want first, but please make sure to make your plan with classes that aren't FYS your primary plan after you've made your plans. Now you can see if I wanted to change this plan, I could click the edit button and it will take me back to the um, search feature so I can add other classes. Um, and again, add as many as I want. Um, sorry, click on that. Um, and just add it there. If I don't care which section um, of a class I get, I can just put in the class as a whole. So um, I'm going to search again. And some classes have many sections, some classes just have one or two. But say I wanted to take, I knew I wanted to take economics. I search. So Econ 101, is one of the um, first classes or is the first class in the econ sequence. And so say there are many, many sections of econ 101. I don't really care which one I take. I just wanna get a section of econ 101. I can go add course and it will just add econ 101 without any specific time or CRN to my plan. And when we run the registration algorithm, um, if there is a section available, it will pick whichever section works with the FYS that you already have. Okay. So that is what I wanted to show you specifically for tonight. Um, I see there are some questions and I believe some chats. So I don't know, Erica and Brian, if there's anything um, we need to do. See or if the Q and A's. Okay, um, so there's a question about priority scheduling. Um, so designated scholars, which are Richmond scholars and Bonner scholars, and then NCAA student athletes have priority registration because for their schedules they need to. They have a lot to schedule around, so they they have priority registration. So they will be registering ahead but um, those are the only groups that get priority registration. There's not a way to apply for priority registration. Um, did we get the other questions answered? I know there's a question about the catalog. If you go to undergraduatecatalog.richmond.edu, you'll find this catalog. Or if you go to registrar at richmond.edu, there's a catalog link across the top um, where you can see the catalog there. Other questions coming in? Let's see. Um, for the, the question about do the presidentials have priority? Only the um, presidential Oliver Hills have priority registration. Um, the other presidentials do not have priority registration. Um, let's see, Brian is answering about that. How do we guarantee pre-med students get into required classes? Um, I would recommend talking to uh, Dr. Vaughn, the pre-med advisor first, but you will have a chance to register um, for, we'll register you for two classes during our um, 
pre-registration your FYS and one other class, and then you'll have a chance to register for the upper the other two classes that you need, because um, we do recommend taking four classes the first semester of your first year. Um, and there is space um, generally in the pre-med classes, but you can also take some of them second semester. You don't have to get all of them in first semester, but Dr. Vaughn is a good resource for pre-med advising. And I know Ms. Vest will be um, answering other questions too about um, picking your classes and, and how to decide what to take. Um, Anything else? So the plans are due by July 1st. So please be sure to make two plans, um, an FYS and a second plan, a primary plan. By then, the registrar's office will be um, registering for one class from each of those plans or for scholars and athletes, um, a total of four classes. And then in August, you'll have the opportunity to register for your additional two classes and make changes if you would like to the question or to the classes for which you were registered during pre-registration. Um, I should also note, I didn't say anything about the wait list. Um, during the pre-registration time, we won't be using wait list, but once registration starts, when you can register yourself, if there's a class that is full and may have a wait list on it, and you can add yourself to the wait list, and then as students are going through the drop ad process, if somebody drops the class and you're next on the wait list, you'll get notification that you have a 12 hour window in which to add the class to your schedule if you'd like, and then it goes to the next person on the list. Students can be on up to four wait lists at a time. Um, and there's 10 seats per waitlist for classes that have them. If you don't see um, a waitlist option in the browse classes, then that department has chosen not to put a waitlist on that class. Okay. Andrea, do you want to answer some of the questions about the advising timeline and when students will be assigned advisors? Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> That's okay. Happy to answer some questions. So everyone should be hearing from their peer advisor by the end of this week. Um, and then depending on whether you're a scholar or an athlete or maybe involved in the Endeavor program, you might hear from a faculty member um, shortly thereafter. However, for the most part, staff and faculty uh, summer advisors will start reaching out after the July 1 deadline before self-registration. So your peer advisors should be able to, um, to guide you in putting your plans together. And if if you're finding that that's not the case, then by all means, please reach out to the Academic Advising Resource Center and we can help you. Thank you, Andrea. Sure. And it, I, if you got to the webinar, you've probably seen the New Spiders website, but I'll just put in a plug for newspiders.richmond.edu, where it has a timeline of everything that's coming up and links out to all sorts of helpful planning materials. Um, there's information on finding language placement. Um, there's links to my office. There's all sorts of things there. So if you haven't been to newspiders.richmond.edu yet, I, you should definitely take a look at that and kind of see what's coming up and register for other webinars. I'm gonna stop sharing for now, but happy to answer any other questions. Or if you think of something else, have questions about BannerWeb specifically, you can feel free to email um, our office at registrar at richmond.edu. Happy to help walk through BannerWeb. There's also um, uh, helpful um, videos on our website at registrar.richmond.edu under the registration tab. So you can watch um, videos that kind of walk you through everything um, in other parts of BannerWeb as well.
Let's see. So for Endeavor, can we still make our own plans? You can make your own plans. If your Endeavor is an FYS, then that will be, you don't need to make an FYS plan because that will be your FYS. Um, but do make another plan of other classes. If your Endeavor is other classes, um, we definitely need an FYS plan to get you into an FYS because all first year students are required to take that their first semester. Um, you can make another plan if you would like and use that later on for registration when it's the self-registration period, but you do not have to make another plan at this point if you are in Endeavor. And Andrea, correct me if I'm wrong. About <laughs> if I say something wrong there. No, that's correct. <laughs> One other thing you might see um, is that there is a wellness class that's required of all first year students. It's a non-credit class. It's all 16 weeks, meets once a week for I believe 75 minutes and it's called Well 100. It's kind of an introduction to college life. So everybody's required to take that class. I would not put that on your plan though at this point because you'll want to get into your credit classes and then schedule your wellness around those credit bearing classes, but just keep that in mind um, that you will during self-registration need to put yourself in a well 100 or my office will put you in one. Let's see, besides the FYS plan, should the second plan be in some specific category? Oh, Erica. Oh, are you, oh, you want me? Okay, I'm <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm working it to answer live. Um, so um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by some specific category. It, you can name it, um, you know, plan one, primary plan, um, and just mark it primary, but it can have classes from all different subject areas across it. And they can be pre-major, they can be gen ed, they can just be electives. Um, you know, things that you're interested in. Um, there's no major that you absolutely have to start everything right away. Um, so feel free to look at electives because um, for most majors, your curriculum is about a third gen ed, a third major and a third electives. And the navigator, um, your peer advisor will assist you through the registration process. Um, so for your FYS, just look at the FYS 100s, pick as many as you can and add to that plan. Um, and for your primary, pick um, other classes in which you're interested in, perhaps a major, perhaps a gen ed, or just things that you're interested in. And also keep in mind that this is not the only time you'll have to say what classes you wanna take. Um, You'll make your plans. We will register you for the two classes. Then you'll do self-registration starting August 3rd. And then registration is open from then through the end of the drop ad period, which um, some classes that the ad period ends after the first week of school, some it's after the second week of school, but you will have a good, you know, five, four or five weeks there to make changes. And, um, you know, seats could be added the upper class students will be coming on the system and making changes to their schedules that might open up seats as well. So kind of keep checking during the registration period to see if a seat might open up in a class that you didn't get previously that you might've wanted. Um, so a distinction from the self-registration classes. The self-registration classes can be classes that were on the plan you made as part of the pre-registration period, or you can come up with, with a new plan if you'd like. Um, they don't have to be. But you'll get one class from your um, primary plan during pre-registration. And then you'll need to come up with two more or a total of four units. Some of our classes are two units a piece, in which case you'd just be taking three classes overall. Hey, Kristen, yeah. a question came in about um, which class you have for which endeavor uh -huh. community. So I just want to say if you applied to Endeavor and you were accepted, you can go back to the Living Learning website, locate the 
community that you are accepted into. And in the, um, in the first tab, it's the coursework overview. It will tell you which class you will be pre-registered for in the fall. Anything else? Again, we're all here all summer, so happy to um, answer questions, email or phone, um, as the case may be throughout the summer. Thank you everybody for your attendance and I'm happy to stay on if people have further questions, um, but again, we'll be here throughout the summer as well. Thank you so much, Kristen. We'll go, ahead, we'll go ahead and close the webinar out and uh, we'll post this recording online for everyone. Great. Thank you, Andrea. You're welcome.